She's called Jane Doe. The remains of a woman found nearly 30 years ago are still unidentified. In 1987, her body was found in a field in Palm Beach County. Her name right now is Jane Doe. This just happened, so I'm, I'm, I'm still shaking, and I understand where this could go, I think. I don't know. I don't know anything, to be honest. I'm literally about to put on some pants and some shoes and head down to the Nashville Metropolitan Police Department because they said that I, there was a hit on a genealogy report for me and the location of Patty Lisa Rust, which is my mom. So, um... It's just crazy to think about how long of a journey this has been. And at first when I picked up the phone, just to give you complete background, I thought it was like a spam call. I don't know. I very rarely answer the phone. Um, Cause I think that like a lot of times it's like someone trying to sell you something. And especially if it's like a police call, you think like, um, you think about like, anybody like trying to make take money from you whatever so for him to like tell me my mom's name and to just say like something hit is so interesting so i have no idea where the day is gonna go i'm just gonna put some pants on i'm probably gonna call sam because i have no fucking idea if this is recent or if this is bones or if this is a person in a recent body um or if it's just fucked, you know? So I just wanted to come on because I've been filming everything, including this goddamn crock pot. And to get a call like that is just the greatest fucking thing. I have spent my life just trying to like get answers and telling my grandma to not. I'm like, <laughs> and boogers. This is the craziest fucking thing. Because I've recently tried to connect with that energy and I, I just, I don't know. I, I, I gotta stop overthinking it. I just need to get down there and ask and see what they fucking have to show me. This is fucking crazy. And I'm like literally in the middle of a dumb fucking TCA email and this comes through and I'm thinking it's like a candidate or... I don't know if I'll ever post this on the internet because this was not even intended, but I did want to like take a moment with myself, with this and just, yeah. All right, let's go. This has got to be the craziest drive I've ever taken and I'm so stressed. And I'm not like traditionally stressed because it's like a beautiful thing to have any kind of information. <sighs> but man well we were back from the police station which was a time regardless um i parked behind the police station by accident i think i actually parked in the impound lot by the way um had to run in the rain it's just like real behind the scenes and me like running in the rain it's okay it's probably like calming me down Luckily this wonderful woman met me in the middle and like, it was just a whole thing. But luckily the rain I think chilled me the fuck out because the whole drive there, I was a fucking mess. I was just crying intermittently, just thinking of all the different things that they could have had to say to me. Um, I think the scariest would have been like, she's fine. <laughs> um, we didn't get that answer obviously. Um, my genetics, uh, my data was pinged based on remains that were found in December of 1987. I'm still processing a lot of that information right now because it means so much to know. First of all, I mean, I first broke down and it was so nice that one cop started crying because I was crying and like, it's just really nice to see people still care out there and it's not just like a, a, a check in the box. And they weren't rushing me at all, which I thought was really interesting. They could have easily just been like, this is what we know. Someone will be in touch. Um... But not knowing was like the craziest thing in my life. But to not to, to know that there wasn't like 
some hidden moment or like she wasn't in hiding or she wasn't um captured for a very long time or whatever happened that's really great um i'm gonna share kind of what i can uh so it is an open investigation so basically what happens is unidentified remains get called um or are, are, are held in this case and like you hear about cold cases all the time you just hear all the horrible stuff about like why like you like, like people don't bring them back up so i just never thought about it and then um you know when i would try and i would try to investigate a little bit when i was older you just feel like what am i just gonna like enter my dna into something random so when i did 23 and me i have to look to what dates that was but i think i always expected a phone call like this and or that i'm a princess of monaco <laughs> i always made that joke but um yeah i expected this moment to happen and um they even had said something alluding to the fact that like and that's kind of what we'll get into into the investigation and i will take people along with me on this because i think it's really impactful to feel like years down the line like to really not give up hope on information i had never and like again we still have to match it so kind of all over the place but i think it was my 23 and me that dinged it because I was the closest genetic match to be her daughter. And then I think I have to read this part of it, but there's stuff about like the actual profile about what my expected family tree would have been. So I didn't really look into this too much yet because I was in it. Um, but it basically stated that myself ginger and denise would be the ones that needed to wow this is actually very cool because it shows like old wow it, it tells you so much in this actually it's crazy but yeah the, the references would have been myself denise and ginger and um it's crazy because i just reached out to them just absolutely wild but they found me through my passport and then i guess my phone number on file and so they probably got that passport photo um so yeah they matched me as like the most likely to be a relative to her when they called they asked if i knew that person i was like that would have been my mom and then they're like well you know they didn't want to tell me anything over the phone so they asked when i could go to the police st station i said right now um so i went down there talked to the two wonderful detectives who have been working in tandem with um this guy that had contacted them i think it was yesterday from west palm beach so um there were skeleton remains found um it was found in december 20th 1987 by somebody walking their dog um approximately 50 feet from roadway underneath pine trees and vegetation um it was just skeletal remains at that point so they believed that they had been there for a long time uh I think that there was foul play based on what this little picture looks like of the crime scene. Um, it doesn't look like there were any clothing or jewelry, but there was also no apparent trauma. So the trauma probably would have just happened to the physical body and not to the skeletons. Um, which is just very interesting. Um, crazy so yeah i was the target tester to match these remains so we are um 23 me like removed its ability to like take raw data and match it uh, probably an epstein thing i'm gonna guess um but they're gonna send me a dna kit i'm gonna take it i'm gonna send it back and then we're going to identify the match i'm still processing a lot i think i cried out most of it and then like getting rained on like Welled me a little bit and when I was sitting in the lobby for like waiting for the detectives to come get me I was sitting on the bench and I almost started crying again and then there was like this break in the clouds and like the sun just shone directly on me god I hate being I can't believe I'm fucking emotional I can but you know what I mean like it's just this is not my natural state um 
I don't know. I'm just so grateful. And I know my grandparents are passed away now and like they have whatever the energy, they know what has happened. But in that moment, I felt so like a scene and like, <sighs> it would be crazy if this didn't pan out to be real, but the timeline is very, very, um, it just matches what's going on so, or like what, I don't know. I can't really talk obviously because of this, but wow, it is incredible to be years from that. You know, what are we talking? That was 87. Hey Google, how many years ago was 1987 December? So this is 36 years. I mean, I could have done the math, sorry. I just, obviously I'm not thinking straight. I think that this will bring a lot of people a lot of peace. Um, I hope so. I think that it's already helped me a lot to know and to just, I think when I was driving home, I recognized that like it changes so much of my life. It's like I can't help law enforcement, like I can't thank law enforcement enough for this because like <sighs> my mom going missing when I was little was such, like it was a core component of who I was and it wasn't my choice. And even to now, like when people ask me about my family and I would have to kind of like skirt around it and be like, my mom went missing when I was little and nothing ever came of it. I don't know. It was so confusing to people and they would ask so many questions that I didn't have the answers to. And like, I just accepted that after a while, right? Like, what can you do? Like, you can't drive yourself so crazy trying to like find answers. Like, that's just not how the world works. And I could probably go above and beyond to think like, sure, I could have gone to a police station every five years since then and like I don't know given my DNA or checked in on it but like at some point I had to feel like I had to let go and like I felt that way with my grandparents too like I wanted them to stop because it just it just was too painful and to know it was like <sighs> I'm just thinking of so many things now like I really hope they allow me to like lay her to rest and <laughs> there's just so much from it that is just so crazy and like I can't even begin to know how to process it but I'm just so grateful that I might have an end story now that just says like she went missing when I was little and luckily people cared enough to continue to like research these things. <sighs> Believe this shit, bro. Here I thought my crock pot was gonna be the thing I cried over today. Oh, shit, bro. Alright. Again, I'm gonna take us all on this journey together, mostly for my own sanity. I think that that's been the whole YouTube journey for me. Is just being honest and authentic about the things that I always planned on talking about my history and I think I always put it off because I didn't want to hurt anybody in my family but like making them feel like I thought like I was missing something by not having her. Um, very interested to know how this affects my dad and Susan and even Kim Dodson like there's just so many people that were affected and I know a lot of them passed on. I just, you know, I don't know if I'll ever get answers as to what happened like to her, to her, but like, this is, this is wild, yo. All right, things started happening pretty quickly. I shredded the chicken, I'm sorry you missed that. I got rice working over there. Everything's a mess in my life, it is what it is. And then this is looking pretty good. It's like just warming a couple more seconds, but it looks okay. Really need a win today. I recognize that this is unhealthy. That's why I'm documenting it. I am trying to out of the spiral, but I have watched this a couple times. Um, it's just a trip, bro. I mean, if this really does match up to be my mom, it's just crazy, man. We're going to open this and get this done, and then we're going to try to get this overnighted. 
kind of time sensitive. Wow, it really looks like 23 and me. to the post office. Here we go. Almost tripped. <laughs> Very important stuff. Today was the day I told my dad and um, subsequently I heard from some of my aunts and then um, I called Sue and then I called Phil and I think that was probably the saddest conversation I had to be honest. Um, it's always the people that really are like soft on the inside that are really stoic on the outside, me included. Um, so I always know those are going to be the hardest people to, to talk to. Um, so Phil is just one of the sweetest human beings I ever knew and like I just hated giving him bad news so that was really sad. Um, my dad same. I think like I really wanted to make sure my dad was okay. Um, and then like I was just so grateful to have like a really long combo with Susan and you know. There's so few people in my life that have been there since the beginning and having that family be who they were to me for so long was so important and it's such a big part of my gratitude and yeah I just it's such a hard thing to process because I know we're all in a lot of pain and it's a lot of shock for everyone today and like again I hate being the steward of that um, but I'm just very grateful to still have them and to have been able to facilitate that today. So again, we're going to close out the day in a very positive light and just be grateful. I'm surrounded by people that love me and loved my mom. Um, the author article also went up today. So, you know, it's just like the bandaid has been ripped off. Um, I think a press release will come out soon. So it's like this week will be very interesting and enlightening and all those things. So I've just been waiting for today for so long. I'm very grateful it's here. So much of this week is a big old question mark right now and that's okay. And we're going to take it a moment in a moment, but whew. Like I feel a lot right now. I just jumped on here because I just wanted to exhale not fully alone. That's kind of what, what I've been doing lately is filming this whole spiral the whole year. It's going to be a great year. We're all healing. Ugh, I just, I literally feel like in my heart the heaviness that everyone else is feeling because I remember the first couple hours since I had been told. So um, lots of prayers to everyone going out tonight. Um, it's just a trip, man. 
it's really just an unbelievable thing to be processing.